meeting Lanza's friends, um, uh, which was also kind of hilarious because they did not believe I was a real person. I got like interrogated mm-hmm. the moment I walked in. Mm-hmm. And did they thought you were you were catfishing Lanza for her TV knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> what did they think? Maybe that's it. Um, and then, but like Slons, he's just trying to get recommendations from me about TV. <laughs> <laughs> the and then, catfish of pop culture podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Friday Night Movie Podcast, where I get together with my sisters. We invite you into our family for an hour and talk about things that our family likes, which really mostly involves television and movies. But, you know, there's also some family drama. Sometimes food. Sometimes food. (laughs) Sometimes the occasional musical, which I think today kind of is a musical episode. Uh... And rather than ask you two how you're doing, I'm just going to (laughs) start and tell you You go for it. You deserve it. I am just back from an amazing sibling vacation with my sister, Becky. Well, I think it's fair to say two-thirds sibling vacation because... We were missing. We are missing. I mean, someone. you're you're. A, here's the thing, though. You are 100% his sibling. So yes. <laughs> it makes it. If you say two thirds, it makes it seem like like Becky there's had a weird genetic Becky had anomaly. three parents, and we weren't sure which <laughs> one. Okay, was. you know what, Lily? I was trying to be kind. I but appreciate The gloves it. are off. The gloves are off. No, no, I appreciate it. I was thinking when you said you said sibling, I'm like, can you really call it that if not all your siblings were there? I said I sibling. Say? Singular. Ah, huh? not siblings. Yeah. Huh. So Becky and I had some time off, and we went to this amazing Los Angeles trip. And I feel like there were so many pop culture events that happened during this trip that that's really going to be where we are, where we are with the show. Now, Lily, you watched both in terms of our internal text chain and from Instagram from far away. I have what? to say, it was fun to be a fan. <laughs> like to to watch. I mean, I don't know if other people enjoy it as much as I did, but what, I enjoyed keeping up with you guys. What were your What are your like, biggest questions? Like, like Kim and Courtney take Miami. Yeah, <laughs> Becky and Shai take LA. But I lo- yeah. Well, we we took LA in a very Becky and Shai way. It was not your typical LA, you know, extravaganza. First of all, we walked most of the places that we went. Do you know that Which there like are blasphemy. no pedestrians in Los Angeles? <laughs> None. We were we were the only pedestrians. We went for we clocked it. blocks we, without seeing a soul. In residential neighborhoods, like not even someone walking a dog. <laughs> Where do their dogs go to the bathroom? I mean, I think they don't. I think they hold they, it. The they dogs, all have the, the pee pad. The, the dogs are all doing the keto diet, so they don't have, they don't <laughs> they don't release solid waste. <laughs> And it was so. A that was the kind of most amazing thing that we would we would walk for an hour, and see maybe one homeless person, <laughs> or two homeless people, but no people like walking to a cafe or a job or something like that. And and apparently we were in the nice part of LA in that process. Yeah, I'm assuming if you were in the not nice part of LA, you would not be able to walk around the way you two schmoes were doing. <laughs> That's fair. Most people thought we were pretty crazy. So being someone who is observing this pop culture vacation from far away, Lily, what are your initial, I would say, questions or observations of this vacation? I mean, I don't know. I I would say observation. I, I, it's like the, ca- the pot calling the kettle black because... I didn't really think of it fully. Like, I heard your guys' game plan previously. You outlined it for me. But I didn't really think it through. Um, Because I know Becky's a pretty big go-getter. But when I spoke to mom, she was just like, oh, no, no, no. I never once will be told again that there are too many activities on this trip that we do. Because have you heard how much Shai's doing? (laughs) I think (laughs) my my motivation is higher when the things are fun. (laughs) 
<laughs> I didn't tell her that. I didn't want to make her feel bad, but <laughs> now she knows. Um, so I was mostly impressed with how much you two packed into, what, 40 hours, 36 For, hours? 48 hours. 48 hours. Okay, so I was that was my, my impressions. Um, I'm not surprised that you found large favorite food objects to eat. So that I was not surprised about. If like, you're going to find the largest something to eat, it's going to be shy. I did Google so, best pancake in Los Angeles. Right. And like, we went to the Griddle Cafe and had a pancake uh, that was the size of a full platter. I would say it was like the size of a whole pizza. The drum symbol, it looked like. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like a 14 to 20 inch pancake. And Becky sits down and looks at me as the pancake is arriving, she said, are you sure you Googled best pancake and <laughs> not, not biggest, biggest pancake? <laughs> Classic. That's amazing. So that was another impression. And then um, my biggest, most important question was, like, I didn't know you were going to meet Mike Roberts for breakfast. So that was a huge surprise for me. Better I didn't know that before because I probably would have, like, like Firestarter or something like I would have started to like, or Phoenix, uh, you know, the dark Phoenix, <laughs> like Gene to burn dark. things. I would have like Jean Grey the shit at my apartment and just like set stuff on fire with rage. So it's good. I didn't know all the details of the weekend previously, but I would say like my biggest imp- like question was what was the lawns Corman reunion like in person? I would say it's weird, right? To be friends with somebody over like Twitter, social media, then share podcasts with them. Cause you guys do the gold nerds, you know, have a rapport. I've talked to Lons on the phone. I have FaceTimed. Like, I feel like she's part of our crew and yet never met her in person, which is absurd to me. So it was it's like it, having a camp friend without going to camp. Yeah, it is. And I think that's what it was. Ultimately. It's like Lons was the, like a long lost camp friend that we never had. It was like, we picked right. up right away and we went on an adventure. Shy, and... I didn't know why you put me on mute for the last 10 minutes. I keep talking and no one is responding to me. Uh, I can't look at my Skype. I'm driving. Stop keeping me on mute. I've basically been deleted from this podcast. So we feel like we're deleted from our vacation. Don't put me on mute. All right. So, Beck, so would you like to respond then? So, to mute other people's yes, heads. I would like to respond to about 20 different things that were not recorded. Okay. In my head, I was like, wow, Becky's just really letting me riff. <laughs> and I'm in my head going, damn it, they're really not letting me get a word in edgewise today. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Everyone's got baggage. Becky, why don't you, I'll just leave it at meeting lawns was everything we'd hoped it would be and more. She no, is truly it. part of you the You wrapped family. it up. You said it. I have nothing to add. You've said everything. Both of you have said everything. Next topic. But I would <laughs> say the, the thing that I didn't count on was how much Becky and Lons had in common professionally. And they riffed and talked about, like, movie budgets and production at a level of incredible detail. It was like going to film school listening to the two of them talk. That's really oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, it was really cool. It was, it was a super fun surprise to to see how much we, we actually had in common and how similar our, uh, our work is. I'll say so that. Yeah, I don't talk about my work on this podcast, but I promise you not. No. I'll, I promise you not a single person we met had any interest or knowledge of the work <laughs> that I do. People are like, huh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might you're like well Chandler. Told, you're the Chandler of this group. I might as well have just told people I was a podcaster. Does. At one point, Becky and I, Becky, do you want to talk about when we were in the when we were in the car, when we were in the Uber? I lost Becky. Do so you Be- need to Becky, unmute her? Becky and I were in an Uber. Oh, I can't really. Oh, Beck, do you remember when we were in the Uber? Yes, we were in the Uber, and we were just like having one of our typical chit-chatty conversations, rapid fire back and forth basically talking about the cat show but talking about the cat show in such detail about the characters and and analyzing them and where we hope to see them go in the film version i mean it was a very intense conversation and at one point the uber driver interrupted us and he goes uh so uh you two uh showrunners or well, that's like the biggest compliment you can get and he was well, looking all, for a job First of all, oh. he was definitely looking to like pitch us a script. One, two. You should have been like, show, yeah. Let me hear your script. What show would we be showrunners of? Because he's in cat <laughs> television show. We're talking about Rum Tum Tugger and <laughs> Muskrat. Or Monk so. Maybe your yeah. future. Maybe they're gonna turn it into a series. <laughs> multicam series. A saga. <laughs> I would love the multicam 
<laughs> the multicam yeah. behind the scenes. Cam cats. Cats. <laughs> so, so the so the trip started off with we got off the plane, we got the rental car, we picked up lawns, we drove south to the Orange County to see a production to, to to see a live production of the musical. Cats. Okay, but did you when you decided you're going to LA, you Googled is so, it, like you just you were like, well, if I'm not going to be in New York. I need to see Cat somewhere else? No, it's, it's that. <laughs> or do you just go to Ticketmaster and be like, what's playing? That's more what I did. And and for me, when I travel places on my vacation versus, like, mom's vacation, things I want to do are go to, like, concerts or musicals or shows, you know, things like that. Not necessarily walk for 12 hours in a museum. To Yet look at a you put up such a fight to go to Cirque du Soleil. Because Ugh. Cirque du Soleil is... Not good. Anyways, so so Becky, <laughs> what, what was your impression of the cats experience? Because you have not seen okay, it since you were a kid. First of all, first of all, Shy says, "Oh, we're gonna go see cats," and we hear all the reasons we're gonna go see cats. I'm like, sure. Saw it when I was six. Well, let's I tell the audience that the main reason is because, and that's how you got Lons to go because she hadn't seen it, and there's gonna be a feature film made with Taylor Swift and Idris, Idris Elba and Dame Judi Dench, correct? Right. And we will be covering the launch of that film in extraordinary. We've detail. already started. Right. We've already started. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is our our pre-show <laughs> for it. And so, so Shai's gonna take us to this because there's gonna be this film version starring Taylor Swift. Lance is obviously a huge T Swift fan, and um, and so to give her sort of a baseline and a deeper understanding of the content, I said we we have to take you to see the show. Oh and I thought, all right, it was a JCC Cats production. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a, like they were kids. It was an elementary school. First, first of all, first of all, I have to. It's like you on Broadway. That... The set is amazing, and then they walk down the aisle, and like. It's so impressive on Broadway. So now so I'm I very saw worried it when for the I was three six of you. years old, and I have this incredible memory from seeing oh, it no. when I was six years old. <laughs> no, no, and I thought, well, first of all, I was six, so obviously I loved it. But as an adult, I'm not really sure how well this translates. Um, so I really better be sure about this activity. Um, and we arrive, and we look at our, Lance and I, we, we get separated from Shy because we go use the bathroom, and we're going to look for our tickets, and we're looking at it, and we're like, oh, okay, these seem like 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 decent seats. It was like row E E. We're like, all right, we'll be on like, <laughs> and the, then there's just like row going towards like the back, rows. not not back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we get in there. No, it was like a huge, it was like a Plastazar situation. Like the big it was room. Huge. Uh, it was like the big so room like of Lincoln Center. Not that big. Like, well, whatever, but like as an example for Lincoln Center, the Kennedy Centers, Place des Arts, right. that that's like size. a big a big theater situation. It's legit, and we're like we can't find our seats, and it's about to start, and they're dinging the lights, and we grab an usher, we're like we don't understand where we can't find this row. She's like, oh, just keep going down, and we're like, why? That seems like counterintuitive. We end up front row center. Whoa. French row center. We are basically, when I say within spitting distance of these cats, I'm literally not exaggerating. Yeah, Munka's strap was a little drooly, so he. he... A little, a little bit of a Did down. you not realize when you bought the seats that you were in the? I mean, I I knew at that point, but I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. It was a surprise, shy twist. Where he, where he, where he let like that moment just be its own reveal. He didn't build it up, so we were like kind of blown away from the very beginning. I have to say, sitting front row at any show, especially one where the set is as cool and intricate as Cats, um, and the costumes are so awesome. It, okay, it so it was blew closer to the Broadway production than than JCC. I have to say, I have to say, I figured we'd be going to like a JCC production. This was like full-on Broadway quality. Amazing. This like blows you away, Broadway. So Lon's like it? Oh, sorry. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to answer Shy or if you put me on. Yeah, yeah. She liked it. She liked it for sure. She was into it. I mean, I think it was a bit hard not to like it. When they start doing the Jellico cats and you're just grooving in your seat, it's pretty awesome. For those who did not get a chance to see it, don't worry. Shy has a DVD of it at his house. (laughs) You can watch (laughs) the musical live at Shy's house. Just head over to his address, knock on the door. For many a time, that was all that was playing in their basement at all hours.
hours when you were a guest and tried to sleep over. We'd have two <laughs> tiny little humans climb on top of you and just be like, let's watch Cats. <laughs> just like a filmed production. Just like someone stuck it. It was like a bootleg. Someone stuck a camera in a theater <laughs> in New York. And that's what I had in like a replay for years. So... So it was a really good production. We were right in the front. We really, I mean, they were looking you in the eye at different times. So there was, you know, there was us and then the stage. Pretty intense. And so that was a really fun, engrossing experience. And I think that's the kind of play you want to be engrossed in. And I would say for the movie, because this is a podcast about movies nominally today, I I think there are some big questions as to what exactly they're going to do with the very loose plot. But I think yeah, that... the plot is like just it's just from the the poems. It's T. S. Eliot's poems. It's just an introduction of all these cats. <laughs> you go, it's just nice. but if you one go long into the montage deep... introduction scene, I don't know. Shine managed to find a lot of depth when he analyzed this story. <laughs> There's a lot of nuance. He found he found he finds the nuance this one. So I think there are some nuance that they can tease out and turn into a real like interesting kind of noir story of crime in the city with cats. But are they going to be dressed as cats in the movie? They are wearing mocap suits and then they're going to do like a kind of CGI like Jungle Book type of thing that hasn't been done before to mesh them with the cats. So they aren't going to put them in the actual 1980s cats leotards oh. which which the, are still impressive today. Still impressive. <laughs> they hold up. But they didn't put them in those outfits, and I think that's a good way to differentiate between the two because the outfits that they're wearing, for the most part, are the same in the live show that we just saw as they were 20 years ago. And so... 30 years ago, yeah. 30 years mm-hmm. ago, too, I guess. I mean, I didn't see it when I was not... I saw. I guess, no, I saw it, yeah, almost 30 years ago. <laughs> and So I think doing something a little bit different and more engrossing. I also think... So the villain in Cats is McCavity. And I think if you've got Idris Elba playing him, which they are, they're going to be able to do a lot more with it than the little illusions. I mean, did. right now, yeah, McCavity is just sort of like, he just sort of like appears for a moment in the play. And then has like a, a sexy a fight with the male cats. With Monkstrap, right? <laughs> with with, with Monkstrap and Alonzo. And, and a lot of the other cats, but it's a... Sorry, okay. So, so we saw that. That was a lot of fun. Then Becky and I, instead of taking a nap, we just sat in the Sophie Tells restaurant and put on a show, watched Shit's Creek on my phone, and kind of. And I was hoping you like, both would have been like, we went to Chateau Marmont and we just sat in the corner watching shows on our phone. When well, well, you were like, we stopped at a hotel please. to relax, I was like, please tell me it was there. But I guess it was. Well, not. no, because we, we wanted to, we were in the area of where we were going to go see our next show. And I had a moment of like anxiety. I'm not going to make it through the day. This is the longest day of my life. And so Shy went into really good 911 mode, found me a comfortable place to sit down, ordered me a tea, and then we watched shows for like an hour so I could reboot. It was fabulous. Oh, that's good. And then from there, we went to Largo, which is a super cool venue where, in LA. Where our podcast heroes, How Did This Get Made, taped their podcast Tape. and had taped mm-hmm. it the night before, but we were not able to get tickets for that. We could get tickets. So we, but we went to go see uh, Tig Notaro do this. What was it? It was like she was just interviewing Sean Hayes. So she was just, she was just having a conversation with him and interviewing him, but, you know, clearly all just improvised hilarity, uh, both of them just being... They're Top such a great game. combo. Super but, funny. But they don't know each other very one, well. No, right. They they might not, but I just mean like they're really opposites. They're in terms both, of they really in terms yeah. of their energy, they're really yeah, opposite. Exactly. And it was so I, funny. I find Tig Notaro when I've seen her in film and on TV and even in interviews, I find it uh, her like genius is appreciated so much more when it's put up against an opposite. <laughs> well, that she actually talked about that how she uses silence a lot, and mm-hmm. and yeah. Sean Hayes is someone who really fills the space, and so right. they played together. I mean, we were laughing so hard we were crying, and it was just them talking to each other. I mean, they didn't even promote his work or anything at any point. They just at one point they just started. They called um, her friend out from the audience whose name escapes me right now. Who is herself it's an actor? Carrie. Carrie Ainsley. Carrie Ainsley. Carrie yeah. Ainsley, who who is a oh, writer and my, and yeah. she did one of the funniest things I've ever seen. They just ever, had ever. her come out of the audience, and she's a an actor and comedian as well. And they prank called Tignataro's brother, 
and she left him a message in like a made up language that almost sounds like English but is just like made up improv language. But it's, it's total gibberish where you're you're like pretty sure you can understand what she's saying. You're like, wait, I must have just like missed a word, but it's complete gibberish. So she's not really saying anything. And it's so hilarious to listen to. I mean, just. And then, oh, are and they amazing. touring or is that show only in LA? No, it's. Ooh, no, it was just like a one time thing, like a one night thing. I think she's, she's doing like this talk show where she's just interviewing random people. And then, and then, um, her brother calls back in the middle of the show, and so she answers the phone call, puts it up to the microphone, and you can see her make everybody in the audience be quiet, even though we're all dying of laughter. And then she just proceeded to have the most boring conversation ever with her brother about his move. And then she hangs up the phone, and she's like, "Huh, oh, jeez, I'm really sorry, guys. I usually guy only the guy only usually says like one or two words to talk, but today he's like, yep, 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 yep." That's really <laughs> cute. It was so great. It was, uh, and then not wasting a moment. As soon as that was over, we hopped in an Uber to meet Lons and her group of friends for trivia night. And these Which... Pe- okay. Well, so, you go ahead. So I was going to say trivia night, and, and these guys are really good at trivia. Like, they win their trivia on a regular basis. When, we, when they went to pay the check, they didn't have but one gift card. They had three gift cards that they've been spending down from because they keep winning the trivia at this wow bar. yeah yeah but i have to tell you we brought we brought it oh we yeah we definitely I, had I, some correct answers george Seurat, the uh painter yeah. Hello. i got that as one of the answers i got jackson pollock i yeah. got that you, other one you, we were, and lily, we were both lily sitting there saying so proud. we were sitting there being like oh, why don't we have lily here to answer all these hard Aww. questions mom and, mom was like wait just interrupt for a sec mom was like heard your guys plan and when she complained that she was doing all these activities and he always complains about activities mom was like you know it's so obvious that you're not on this trip and i was like why and she's like Ugh. like as if like she's like for one second i was her favorite she's just because because they're not going to a single museum i was like i know if mom Blast puts if mom puts and a mom bar trivia like... night on vacation i'll go to that <laughs> Yeah, but I would have true. definitely, if I was with you, had to, had to sneak in some kind of museum. So I'm glad that you, at least you looked at art on trivia night. I mean, you could have snuck in a museum visit while Shai and I spent five and a half hours the next day in the middle of the day in bed in the hotel. Separate beds. And watching separate, shows, beds. separate beds. In each of our separate with, beds. With the air conditioning watching, pumped up. Like, so cold, I needed to take a hot shower after to, like, warm my body <laughs> back up. <laughs> And we, we, we just, yeah, the next day we, we ended up napping for a really long time. But I would just say when we but, arrived to meet Lonza's yeah. friends, yeah, we me. were immediately interrogated because they did not believe that I was real. Um, they thought Pancake for the Table was like a made-up name. And then the funniest thing of all is, I, so I sit down and her friend, Charlie, immediately asks me, I need to see your ID. Can you show me your ID? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm like, well, wow, these guys are pancake. really, really, really stiff on carding people here. So it's not gonna say pancake on it. No, but you know what it also doesn't say? It doesn't say shy because Be shy. my real name is <laughs> Samuel. So they were like, who are you? <laughs> I told you you're catfishing. They thought you're catfishing for movie wrecks. Uh, then the next day we met. We had our we met dear friend of the podcast and now dear friend. IRL in real life, as the kids say, Mike Roberts, <laughs> no. creator. Yeah, of Mike Dallas Roberts. That Robo. Was I think fun. if you just say IRL, you don't have to say to in, say real, in life. real life. Well, like that's the. Like just pick like one. Like if someone doesn't know what IRL is, they'll just Google it. It's fine. They'll just be like, oh, I don't know what that. I'm just saying it just was. makes you not look later. cool. I, well, either way, Mike. Met him in person. Like try, try and use it casually, like friend of the podcast and now friend IRL. Just like. Don't make a big deal of it. Anyways, you know? what a phenomenal guy. We had a great breakfast, talked movies. He is so friggin' smart and awesome just to analyze and break down movies with. And I feel like every, every, I don't know, everything he has to say about a movie, I'm, I'm hanging on every word. And like legitimately. It's yeah. super cool. And of course, if you haven't heard already, go back and listen to the Mike Roberts Last Jedi pitch. Because I told him, I, and I told him, I said, I think about his pitch on how he would have done the Last Jedi story all the time and wish that was the movie that was made. <laughs> and mm-hmm. he did that with a few other things just casually in conversation. And I'm like, well, Mike should make all the movies. 
Yeah. yeah. So, that's great. So that that's was, awesome that you guys got to have we, breakfast. Then we took our nap. Now, the shows we watched during the nap included an episode of Psych, a lot of Shit's Creek, and rum, uh, drum well, roll, you please. Forgot, you forgot that we also met the original Miri. Miri. No. Oh, that happened before the nap. Oh, I forgot. That okay. was before the nap. That was like that was in our like long. I was walk. building up to that. Walk. I was building up to that. Um, that's true. That was when we walked across all of Los Angeles to Venice Beach. We walked like is... literally a mile, but it felt like we walked for two years. We didn't even see anybody on that beach until it was like post-apocalyptic. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it was a lot like Escape from L.A., the sequel to Escape from New York. New York. <laughs> with Kurt Russell. <laughs> that's what it was like. And so we met the original Miri, Miri Jedikin, who is a dear family friend from Montreal, the first family to welcome us to Montreal when we when we moved And she there. was our babysitter. And her babysitter, little... and her sisters were our babysitters. And it was a wonderful reunion. And we it was it was wonderful. And and then we also watched during our nap, we watched Tacoma F D, which oh, I think I sold Becky that on. Was, oh, totally sold me on that. I'm I think Jones in for another app. That show is, like you said, it's like super troopers, but less gr- gross and more appropriate for television. And it's on yeah. a network called True TV, which we it's still made up. We can't find, but it has tons of commercials all over the city. There are billboards everywhere for their stuff. Everywhere in LA, there were uh, billboards for it. Pretty cool. And they have a show on it that in the commercial has Jason Manzukis. And I'm like, what is this network that has Jason Manzukis? <laughs> and. And so with all the walking you did, you guys didn't bump into any celebrities doing, you know, they're just like us stuff, pumping gas. No, I don't think we were in any of those areas. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> La- Lons is the most famous person we met for sure. And Mike yeah. Roberts. And Mike and, Miri, and Miri. They're all, Miri but that's the, was in, the, in the biz too. Yeah, they're all celebrities in their own right, but, but we didn't meet any people like that they would cover. And right. So, but that's, uh, there were no, there were no, I mean, because we didn't see people most of the time. <laughs> it's this weirdly empty city. And, it's hilarious. And then la- that night we went and we saw the movie Shazam, which now I think we can give a more full review to. Go Let's see go Shazam, ahead. people. DC has figured out how they should make superhero movies, and that is with heart and with fun and with making a movie that's honestly for kids. I mean, it's a little bit scary at times, like Ghostbusters-esque in terms of the like monsters that are in it, but Zachary Levi channels Tom Hanks in big and mashes it up with a superhero movie just perfectly. There's a really fun cameo at the end of it um, during the grand finale. There's um, some really good action. The villain played by Mark Strong is, I think, really... Mark Strong is just solid. I wouldn't say he's... He's not at Alan Rickman level or anything like that, but that's someone that I think you can rely on. If he's the villain in your movie, you, you've got that, that part taken care I of really well. I love... Oh, shot. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm oh, sorry. I don't know what happened. I love a good Mark Strong bad guy situation. Yeah. And he does it like, great. It, he's... he's in. He's a bad guy in so many things. Um, I, I, Yeah, I'm a huge fan of him as a bad guy. And, 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 and you can tell Zachary Levi understands... Like what he's doing, the same way uh, Aquaman understood uh, the what's his name, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa, yeah. Understood what movie he was in. Zachary Levi completely understood what he was there to do. The only difference between Shazam and Aquaman is that every other actor in Shazam understood what they were there to do too. So right. they, they were Aquaman. In... They were a little. They were each getting some like slightly different direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, Willem Dafoe filmed that movie on a soundstage Which... different from everyone. Different. Else. Yeah, <laughs> he was piecemeal together into that movie. Yeah. He was doing some sort of Shakespearean um, performance, like the like he thought he was in the darkest hour or but, something. But, He's confused. But we need a Shazam, Wonder Woman, Aquaman team up. Like those yep. three actors, they get it. They can make a great story. You do not need Superman and Batman. In fact, in some ways, Superman and Batman are they've, so, so I have, let's big. Let's be honest. I feel like they've it. ruined Superman and Batman at this point. 
Yeah. And um, I would I would also add about Shazam, one thing that I, I really liked about it is that it is low budget. It is not a – you can tell it's not a huge budget movie, and I read a great article um, about how Warner Brothers – how Warner Brothers kind of saved the DC Extended Universe with a movie like Shazam by not spending a lot of money but making something that people really liked of good quality that has earned a lot of money proportionally back. And I feel like, you know, you don't need all the special effects in the world. I mean, there's some flying and there's some demons, but there's nothing you haven't seen before. What's good about it is the charm and the fun and the family atmosphere about it. And uh, it was absolutely, absolutely lovable. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Emphatic thumbs up and totally I mean, I haven't it. seen it. I don't know why I'm saying so that. If, so if your kids aren't scared, if you're a listener and you have kids and they aren't scared of a movie like Ghostbusters or Lord of the Rings, I would go take your kids. If they are, wait to see it on video. It would be less intimidating on video. And yeah, so, because there's a few moments with those demon faces that are a little terrifying. Yeah, the demons do bite off the heads of one of the character's family members at one point, but it's a bad guy. Nobody, nobody sympathetic that's good dies. And also the kid actors in it are terrific, particularly the kid who plays Freddie Freeman, who's the best friend of Billy Batson. That kid was amazing. His, yeah. his back and forth with Zachary Levi. They is, have so much chemistry, the two of them. Yeah. Terrific. It really, it really makes the movie. Are there hum. any like highly inappropriate, big Tom Hanks, Elizabeth Perkins, like sex scenes where she's actually having sex with like a 14 year old. <laughs> no, there, you know, and it's actually refreshing. There isn't a romance there's angle. There's no romance oh, that's in good. it at all. That's good because often really, there's it's just really so, a romance like, angle. Because in Aquaman, it's, about, it's, it's so forced. Ugh, yeah, no, no, no. This is really like about two best friends, it's about Billy Batson, Brody Freeman, and uh, uh, there's no. You know, no romance aspect, which is really nice. And it's about family as well, and and you know the family you choose versus the family you're born into, and 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 it's about how family treats kids. There's a, the one of the most important threads in the movie is that both the villain and Billy Batson have negative relationships with their biological family, but Billy Batson stays good, and this other kid becomes evil. And that's part of what why Billy Batson is able to become Shazam, and so that I think is a really neat thread that has to do with that has to do with choice and and being a good person. So it has a really nice message I think in it as well, and it takes place in Philadelphia slash Toronto. <laughs> like there there are definitely Toronto. Oh, there, so there, many good Canadian accents. Oh like my all God. the side, all like the you know side side actors, side like not even Excellent. like yeah like extras that have some lines. They're all so Canadian. Yeah, they might as well. My be. favorite is I don't think that Mark's gonna buff out of my car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bullies are super Canadian. I'm gonna beat you up. Yeah. <laughs> the 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 bullies. And they finish are... their sentences with the word no. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> no? No. No. Yeah. And, and, and he, so they show, it takes place, at, the setting is Philly, but they just do these, like, big scene setting shots of, like, William Penn. And at one point, they blow up the statue, which is pretty funny, and the museum. That's hilarious. But then every other scene with people in it, if you ever have been to Toronto, you're like, I think I've actually been to that desolate apartment building. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, that's great. I'm glad. I'm really, you know what, honestly, I know I don't have, I got no dog in this fight. I do not give two shits. I'm just so happy for Zachary Levi. Yeah. I know. Like, just, I'm really happy for him that this wasn't like a piece of turd. No, it was, mm-hmm. it was really good. So that's great. It was really, really terrific. And Lily, what were you watching while Becky and I were on this pop culture quest? You know, I've had I had a tough week, so I'm not gonna um, be much help here. But I will say that like I R X Rex R X myself 
And I was like, you know what? You're having a tough week. I have like a bunch of cooking that I have to do and like cleaning up and stuff. I was like, I need something that's on. I need to not be wasting this time not watching TV. Like I should be watching TV while I'm doing these activities. You know, when you're just sort of like, I need TV. But I could not have anything remotely interesting or serious. And then I actually texted Becky because I saw on Netflix that like this uh, yet another piece of crap teen movie came on. Like those things are just like like bait for me. Like I need to stay Which away. One? The perfect date. They all have the same lead, male lead. <laughs> like I get that there was the rat pack, the brat pack, sorry, when we were kids. Like, you know, like they just cycled through Rob Lowe and Andrew McCarthy. Like I get Don't forget that. C. Thomas Howell. C. Thomas Howell. Who saw, will be at All Star Comic Con along with us. That we hope will hopefully meet. I'm just saying, like, I get that in the 80s they cycled through certain male, like, teen actors, the, you know, the, the Corys, et cetera. But these, like, five teen movies on Netflix all have the same exact guy as this boy. And it's, like, a bit much. Anyways, um, so I watched The Perfect Date. Um, <laughs> yeah, I... Like, I'm bordering on just might as well go to the switch to the Hallmark, Hallmark channel at this point. Like, I have to believe, I know that our teen movies were racist and very sexist and questionable. Very, I think they were mostly just sexist. I mean, they're probably racist, but they were. They, there was some, you know, questionable racist things. There's definitely some consent issues in our teen 80s movies that we love so much. Yeah, you just However, summed up 16 candles and every candles. bit of things. Right. Well, no, but that's, no, but the 80s were particularly bad. I feel like by the 90s, it was less racist, right. but still very and, sexist. And consent was maybe a Getting better maybe um and so i feel like yet those movies i'd rather show my kid any of those movies and just explain that the 80s were more racist and sexist <laughs> and like now you have to know is no and show them those show show my kids those movies than any of the piece of crap that they're making now um however i enjoyed it it was fun um so yeah and i'm like starting season three of the last kingdom Dude, like you, you guys, it's a great show. Is that another have Viking any show? of the three it's, of us it watched? Is a, it, it is a Viking. Have show. any of the three of us watched the Game of Thrones premiere? No. Oh yeah. No, I, wait, I haven't seen. All right, we'll do. We'll, anything. we'll talk I'm about it. Until Sunday. That'll, be our, Sunday. Double on Sunday. That'll be, be our Sunday. Double header on Sunday. That'll be our. Okay. No, I, no, because I like to watch two episodes at once. So I was gonna watch yeah. them both. Okay, on so Sunday. three weeks from now, we'll if you if you haven't gotten to Game of Thrones yet, three weeks from now, we'll have our review. Well, I think okay. everybody's gotten into it b- b- besides the two of you. I had a um, funny. I, just, I, I had a similarly. Wait, I, funny story oh. about kids and movies the, the, to Lily's mm-hmm. thing about showing them movies from the 80s. So my, I, I've been alone with the kids the last couple of days and we had a movie night last night and we actually did this whole voting process because I didn't want to just watch one of the kids' movies. They didn't want me to pick some random thing they didn't know. So we had a whole bunch of movies and we voted. Like Gleaming the Cube? And, well, anyways. <laughs> so Spaceballs won. It got, it got the most votes from Ooh. the three of us. They've seen it. They've, They've seen, seen it many before. times. And so Spaceballs uh, has a lot of R-rated humor, and there is a scene early on where um, there is a guy oh, on the good. crew whose name is Major Asshole, and the and Dark Helmet, and then it finds he he finds out that it's a cousin of another guy named you know first mate asshole and there's all these people on the ship whose last name are asshole and he says i'm surrounded by assholes well one of my kids jumps up and goes i'm surrounded by assholes and i was like whoa 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 that's a grown-up word please don't repeat that to blame and the kid says to me what do you mean because they don't know the word we you know we don't say it around and they said what do you mean it's a character's name and i was like huh all right Good point, but it, but it's a bad well word. Played, so you child. Shouldn't, you well played, child. Well, I don't like and then the said, kid, you have no one to blame but yourself. No, and then the kid <laughs> comes back to me and says, but I wasn't saying it as a bad word. I was just saying it because all those characters' last name is asshole. And I was like, You're like, huh, you're like, stumped. just keep saying asshole. Yeah, whatever yeah. you do. <laughs> so, stumped. <laughs> <That's> amazing. Um, <laughs> and I just want to say one thing. Yes, I'm really, like, Viking shows. I'm giving them a two thumbs up. The one I'm just gonna say, the Last Kingdom moves really fast, so the story moves along. So it's not if you're worried about it being like slow and boring. Yeah, I think it moves fairly quickly, being like an old timey Viking show. And by the way, Josh um, Crew, furious, 
furious that you're now yeah. watching Viking shows <laughs> and, and the rest and of us are still... I don't know. Yeah. Josh emailed me about something unrelated to Viking shows, but then put a line in at the end to make sure I was waking, watching Viking shows. Yeah. And I'm like, amazing. I feel like you use um, this unrelated email as a way to, <laughs> to watch Viking shows. Did you talk to you about Viking shows? And I just want to quickly, I think before we wrap up, Shay, I, I don't know if you have anything else. I just, I just want to know if you guys are feeling this pet peeve as well. And speaking of Josh, perfect segue into a fetch. Um, not a kvetch list, but I do have like a, I feel like a Josh style kvetch. Why does everything have to have a stories now? Like Instagram has a stories, Facebook has a stories, WhatsApp, which living in Europe, everybody uses WhatsApp and nobody just texts. So now WhatsApp, your like status can be like, you can put up stories, you know, like as if it was on Instagram. Then I went on Netflix and at the top of Netflix on my phone, it was all these like quick stories about the new shows that are coming. Not really previews. It's as if it's stories. It's just quick little ten seconds that blurts like like bleeds one into the other. That's one. That's and, one I'd like to. That's one I'd and, like to send back. And then and then yesterday, my brother-in-law was like, "Oh, so and so something something," and I was like, "Oh, how do you know that?" They're like, "Um, it was on their status on WhatsApp." I was like, "Oh, god damn it!" I was like, "I have too many things to too look much, at." Too much. It's too much to keep up with. It's I was just like, too much to keep have, up with. I'm like, too much 10 second content to keep up with. I'm done I'm just with the story. Just assume people are not communicating communicating anything relevant if they're doing it through yeah. a story. I'm just like, I'm storied. Once I saw that thing on Netflix, I was like, come on. But anyways. All right, that's a that's good fetch. That's my fetch. No, that's a good fetch. All right, um, shout outs. Who's got some shout outs? Well, I feel like you and Becky have all the shout outs this week. Yeah, we do. I mean, basically shout out to everyone from our from our trip, Shy. But, you know, we just spent a whole hour talking about them. So, I want to shout out to that one actor that's in all those, like, Nick Centennial, I think it is. <laughs> Shout out to him because, you know, I guess you need to change agents. No, or don't because he's getting hard to work. Or don't. Yeah. Uh, so, and I want to shout out to a random, uh, not a random, per, but someone who I find funny and talented that I follow on Instagram. The, it's, a, it's a woman. Her name is Candace Martela Martellaro, and she wrote for Stand Against Evil and is part of a comedy troupe called, I think it's a comedy troupe, yeah, sketch comedy group by definition called Fembot PhD. And I find her extremely talented and funny. And that's awesome. I, you know, I hope that. Uh, uh, I hope I hope one day we get to talk to her. That would be amazing. Um, but I just have I just she's uh, someone that I stumbled on because of my love of Stand Against Evil, and it just strikes me as someone that's incredibly talented and funny and smart. And I think people should check out if she's performing or anything like that. I I think next time we go to LA, we should try to see one of her performances because she seems to be really what talented. Do, what do you mean next time we go to LA? <sighs> yeah, I was planning on going back. We got to go back to LA. Yeah. Wait, I, so Shine, you hate everywhere that's not your house. How, like, general impressions of LA? Up, good, thumbs up, thumbs down. So, I mean, A, there wasn't the fact a that you don't have to walk anywhere is kind of a plus. Yeah, but I, I need to, in order to eat on vacation, I have to walk a lot. So, <laughs> so being able to walk extraordinarily long distances without having to bump into people was actually so quite So, New convenient. York is more your town then, is what I, you're saying. I, I liked it. I really enjoyed being in a place where you could where you could sort of you're in you're immersed in there's creative things going on but at the same time you can't really tell like there's mystery about everything like you, you just can't nothing is what it seems anywhere you go mm -hmm. is, is how i felt like is this really That's avocado it. toast or is this really somebody's podcast i don't know <laughs> <laughs> a little mulholland, uh, mulholland drivey if you will it, uh, it, it, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like everywhere I went, because Ren, LA is this sort of pop culture phenomenon, right? I've seen so much movies and things, and 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 going there, I I kind of expected to see everything that I saw from LA, <laughs> and I and I almost saw none of it, except that as we were walking down these like bleak streets with pawn shops and electrolysis places, I was like, oh, this feels like I'm in one of the places Tarantino characters would have, like, an obscure meaning during a Tarantino movie. Oh, that's cool. You had a Tarantino-esque. Yeah. Which is now a word added to the dictionary. 
Oh, wow. Cool. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I would I say that was my biggest feeling, but also the food was killer. The food was amazing. Yeah, we ate some. Oh, that's great. Really the food was amazing. Food. That was really cool. I mean, right. my and, only issue with LA was walking and then not feeling like I'm getting anywhere. That That's accurate. At no point <laughs> did I, I feel like, like I had I feel like the Mulholland Drive. There are so many Ubers. It, There's so many Ubers. Like you, walk, you walk for 50 minutes, you don't get anywhere, and in a $5 Uber, you're at the place. It's amazing. So it's like you just need the Uber to push you over the finish line. <laughs> I will say the Uber drivers were a little too chatty. That was my they only They were problem. way too chatty. Everyone's taught one I, guy... we didn't even we didn't even talk about my Game of Thrones spoiler Uber because I am so mad at that. I can't <laughs> You had a game there's nothing you could spoil. There's no spoilers in that first episode. That's how I no, feel. No, it wasn't, everything it wasn't that a happened. spoiler about the first episode. No, you the guy did spoil mind, things later in I the season. Don't... I go dark. Does he know? Does he work for Game of Thrones? No. Listen, I go dark between seasons. I don't watch anything. I don't read anything. I do nothing. I don't watch the preview. I don't, nothing. I am just, it's all surprises for me. And he kept on saying, no, no, I'm not going to give spoilers. And I kept telling him everything you're saying to me is a spoiler. And he's like, yeah, but we know in episode three, this is going to happen. And we know that this person is alive because of that. And I would just like... I was gonna put those I, ear canceling, so sound canceling earbuds. Yeah. Becky was like I, one star for you. One star for you. <laughs> Amazing. All right. All right. With All that, right. Lily, that where it. can people follow you? At Chichi K Gomez on Ooh. Twitter. I was listening to somebody else's podcast, actually, that Ali recommended. Um, call your mother. Oh, that's great! Was, I listened to that too. Yeah, um, I really. I only listened to the Jill Cardman episode, but I love her so much that it was such a. It was a great episode to listen to, for me. And I listened very carefully how the, how everybody on the show did their handles, and amazingly, they just go at the name and then the social media. So I'm practicing at Chichi K Gomez on Twitter. At paper BK princess on Twitter. At pancake for a table on Twitter and Instagram, and you can follow us at Friday at Fry Night Movie on Twitter and Instagram, and we will be fifty plus day, fifty, 50 no, plus 50. or minus days fifty days to go until the All Star Comic Con. We have the gear has arrived for us to do taping in the field, and I'm going to test it out at Awesome Con. Awesome Con is DC's big Comic Con in a couple of weeks, and I've connected with the Take Two podcast guys and with Kevin and Mike, and hopefully I'll tape a little bit of stuff with them when I'm there. And uh, so Awesome Con is April 26th, like that weekend, and so I'm going to go down there and test out the field recording abilities. Amazing, Becky and I have our tickets very excited for, for all star plane tickets for, oh, no, plane no, tickets our, for all-star. Our, our physical plane tickets yeah for all-star and i hope we have tickets to the actual comic-con oh i guess we have a booth that's our ticket <laughs> yeah the booth is your ticket we will cool, cool. no i arranged i got the tickets as part of the the package and okay. the, the exhibitor package so we're, we're oh yeah nice. let us know what we owe you i probably won't pay you back but just let me know <laughs> like realistically, yeah, that's a, that's the correct way to so say it, back for that. for an older brother. Let me know what I owe you. That's just information. <laughs> There's no clause in there that says tell it, me how much I can make. Moments yeah. like this where Shits, so I have, where Shit's Creek, so by the way, I can, where Lons gets the I told you show for Shit's Creek, where especially when you get into the second and third season, and there's moments when we have conversations like this, where I'm like. Ooh, Schitt's Creek hits way closer to home than something like <laughs> Chris Maisel does. Close to the bed. As far as something we're like. <sighs> uh, yeah, I, love, I love how your wife, Shy, is calling me as we're podcasting. All right. Just hilarious. All right. All right. Bye, love guys. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Have a great love day. Love you. Have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.